On today's episode, we're talking about aerodynamics. Welcome back to the channel, race fans. So, the EF build is coming to a close. I think we've probably got about two episodes left. The car has run two race weekends. First race weekend had a lot of teething problems. Second race weekend was very good. Run my fastest time at my local track that I've ever run in any car. So the car seems to be working fine. Now is the time to make it faster and more beautiful. So as the intro said, today we're gonna to be talking about aerodynamics and specifically aerodynamics that you as an amateur motorsport enthusiast can do. If you think about the world of aerodynamics in motorsport, F1 teams, NASCAR teams, uh, GT teams spend millions of dollars, uh, wind tunnel time, CFD, developing the aero. Does it need to be scary? <coughs> There's lots of things you can do to your car that will improve its aerodynamics and make it faster that are not ridiculously expensive. All you gotta do is give it a go. But first, let's talk about aerodynamics in general. I am not an aerodynamicist by any means. Um, I'm an airline pilot. I've been a pilot and in the aviation industry for 25 years. So I do know a little bit about aerodynamics, wings and stuff like that. But what can you do as an amateur in your home garage? That's what we need to talk about. Well, the two things that you want to look at is reducing drag and increasing what's called downforce. So let's take those two separately. Drag's probably the cheapest thing that you can fix on your race car. And I hear you say, what is drag? Well, air is a fluid. Think about yourself in a swimming pool. If you take your hand like this and move it through the water, there's a lot more resistance than if you turn your hand this way and move it through the water. By doing this, you have effectively reduced the drag of your hand. So that's what you want to try and do for your car. So how do you reduce the drag? Well, the car is a big chunky object moving through air. So, polish the car. I know that sounds really simple. Turtle wax, polish the surface of your car. The air will flow across uh, the surface of the car a lot smoother, therefore reducing drag. What else can you do? Well, get some tape. Tape seams, seams from lights, seams from hoods, seams from body panels. Try and make the car as smooth as possible. And then if your race series allows it, start taking stuff off that stick out like wing mirrors. Uh, the rails here for rain, fill those in. Make the car as smooth as possible. That will reduce your drag. Now, that's the cheapest thing you can do. Unfortunately, it also only gives you like micro gains. Um, but if you're pushing for that extra 10th around the track, that might help. The biggest thing you can do though, is you can add stuff to the car to help with mechanical grip because mechanical grip is what literally makes you fast. So there are four main areas and all can be done by the amateur um, at relatively low cost. I'm gonna go through four and then I'm gonna show you how I'm going to do them and the cost of how much it's gonna cost me to do it. But let's define some terms first. So you basically, your car generates drag thrust through the wheels going forward. It's held onto the earth by gravity. And then it also produces a vertical motion called lift, like an airplane. If you think about the shape of a car, air comes in, it hits the bonnet, uh, the hood, it goes up over the roof and then down the back. That's a bit like a wing. So any car driving through the air wants to lift off the ground. Now luckily, generally, the weight of the car and gravity keeps it on the ground. But what you want to do is you want to try and reduce that lifting motion. So you want to change the force that's going up into a force that's going down. Hence the term downforce. So as I said, there are four main ways that you can increase downforce on a vehicle and specifically a race car. Let's go through each one of them. So first off, everybody knows about putting a wing on your car. Most wings you see on modern day cars are actually just cosmetic, especially if it's been added by the owner of the car, they bought it off eBay. But you can buy wings out there that are actually functional and they range anywhere from 500 bucks up to three, $4,000. You don't need to spend that kind of money 
Um, all you need is a little bit of ingenuity. A wing is a wing. Um, it doesn't really, um, the shape of the wing will create more downforce uh, and the size of the wing will create more downforce. And more importantly, the placement of the wing. So how does the wing work? So this is the wing of an aeroplane. If you look at the diagram, <coughs> you've got the airflow coming in. The way a wing works is it accelerates the air over the top surface because of the distance from point A to point B being longer and the distance underneath the wing, point A to point B. So for the air to stay together, the air over the top has to travel a further distance, therefore it has to speed up. As the air speeds up though, it reduces in pressure. So you have a low pressure system on top of the wing. High pressure wants to go to low pressure, therefore you are pushed upwards and you generate lift. And that's how aeroplanes fly. So if you take that simple concept and now and flip that upside down, if you change the wing and you now have the wing upside down, you're still generating lift, but it's not pointing in an upwards direction, it's pointing in a downwards direction and therefore pulling the wing down. So if that is now attached to your back of your vehicle, that is gonna pull the back of the vehicle down onto the ground and increase your mechanical grip. So that's what wings do. We'll come on to that, uh, where I'm, what I'm gonna do with my wing in a minute. Now, very important guys, some people just slap a wing on the back of the car and they're like, oh shit, my car handles like crap, why is this? So if you're increasing the downward force on the back of the car, relatively you are lifting the uh, force on the front, which if you drive a front wheel drive car is very bad because that's where the driving wheels are. If you drive a rear wheel drive car, it's bad as well because that's where your turning wheels are. So you'll understeer into corners and you'll lose grip if you're a front wheel drive, drive car. So this is very important. The only two modifications you make to your car to increase grip and aerodynamics is a wing you must put on the front of a car a splitter. So splitters, what do splitters do? Well basically as the airflow hits the front of the car, air is a liquid and wants to take the path of least, least resistance. So it goes around the sides, it goes underneath, it goes over the hood, it goes through all the little gaps in the front of your bumper. Realistically, the only place you want the air to go is you want it to go in through your radiator, up over the hood and underneath the car. You will get a bit bits going around the side, <coughs> but if you can control the airflow, you can reduce drag, you can increase cooling performance of your radiator, and you can also increase downforce. So this is how we increase the downforce. A splitter is basically a flat piece of material <coughs> that attaches to the underside of your engine. And in doing so, it creates a boundary layer. So now you get air going underneath the car in a controlled, smooth manner. It increases the speed and it lowers the pressure of the air. As we know with the wing, low pressure creates lift. And in this case, between the ground and the splitter surface, it actually creates suction. And it basically sucks the car to the ground. That increases mechanical grip. So now you've increased the mechanical grip at the back by having downforce from your wing and suction from your splitter. But the design of the splitter also has to be very careful. You want to create a high pressure above the splitter, low beneath it. So you need something to control the air on top of the splitter. You can't just have it hitting the bumper and going off in all different directions. So this is why we build what is called an air dam. And an air dam is literally that. It's a nice flat surface that dams the air, creates a high pressure system, and can be used to feed the air through your radiator. More airflow through your radiator, better cooling. So now you've created a splitter on the front, wing on the back. You've increased downforce on the front and the back of the car. Realistically, that's all you have to do. That will vastly improve the aerodynamics of the car. But there are two other things you can do as an amateur. Nothing you can really do about the airflow over the top of the car. It comes over the top of the car, your wing is in nice clean airflow, it's generating downforce. But the air that's gone underneath your car now goes nice and smooth underneath your splitter. But then at the end of your splitter, it hits control arms, it hits your exhaust, it hits the uneven bottom of your car and generates turbulence. Turbulence reduces 
grip and lift. Um, think about what turbulence feels like when you fly through it in an airplane. The airplane gets knocked all about. It's because the airflow is not smooth anymore. So to improve that, you make the bottom side of your car smooth. And that is what we call a flat floor. Uh, Formula One cars um, utilize this to generate most of their lift because they have what's called ground effect. They have channels in their floor which actually create lower pressure systems and suck the car to the ground. Um, if you smooth the bottom of your uh, surface of your car, the airflow coming off the splitter will stay attached and still the suction that you felt on your splitter, you will now feel across the entire section of the bottom of your car. That's a lot of suction, that's a lot of mechanical grip. So that's the third thing you can make, you can make a flat floor. And again, this doesn't have to be crazy. Uh, you can go as far as simple as literally getting pieces of uh, alumilite, thin aluminium if you want, and just attaching it to the areas that are either side of your exhaust or your drive shaft. You don't even have to encompass the drive shaft. Just smoothing off as much as you can will improve the characteristics of the underside of that floor. If you want to go super crazy, you can build a frame that encovers everything, the exhaust, the drive shaft, and it's a perfectly smooth floor. That's excellent, but it also comes with some drawbacks. If you think about what's between that floor now and the proper floor of your car is your exhaust, and your exhaust generates a lot of heat. So heat buildup can cause many things. Um, the most common thing for it to cause is an uncomfortable car to drive because it just literally heats the bottom of the car and you're now sat on hot metal driving the race car and we push race cars pretty hard so what you want to build into your flat floor is a way to evacuate the air from that little gap the hot air there's different ways about doing this and again it's using aerodynamics the simplest way is to put louvers into the floor that as the airflow goes over the louvers the low pressure drags air out of the system. The last thing you want to do though is have your louvers the wrong way around because that will force air into that gap creating drag and other problems. So louvers, knackerducks, whatever you can get your hands on strategically placed should keep the gap between your flat floor and the floor of your car cool. Now the fourth and final thing that you can do caps off this entire underfloor system and makes it work perfectly. It's called a rear diffuser. Now, you, again, you see on modern cars and kids and uh, guys modifying the cars, just throw a diffuser on the back, but they don't put a flat floor. A diffuser on the back of the car without a flat floor is pointless. Basically, you have to do what the term is, is you have to feed the diffuser. And that actually means taking the air that's going underneath the car and feeding it into the diffuser. So as it comes out the back, the air diffusers and generates grip. You can now understand now, if you're not feeding clean airflow into it, realistically, you're just putting drag and weight on your car for no reason. So if you are gonna do a diffuser, make sure you do a flat floor as well. That's why the splitter and the wing, super easy to do, anybody can do it. The number one modification for aerodynamics that I, uh, I suggest. Flat floor diffuser, a bit more advanced, but give it a go, it's a race car. Modern day cars are coming with flat floors and diffusers that work properly because of technology. Um, this 90s Honda and your race car, you might have to get a bit creative. Uh, I'm gonna give it a go. So, fourth, just to quickly recap before we go on to what I'm actually gonna do. Five things you can do to make your car more aer aerodynamically sound. Cheapest, reduce the drag. Tape, everything, polish, make it nice and shiny. Four main, active uh, uh, downforce generators. Number one, put a wing on it. Placement of the wing is key, do your research. Number two, if you put a wing on your car, put a front splitter on your car. It will not work as you expect if you just throw a wing on there. Number three, flat floor the car. And number four, add a diffuser that is fed by your flat floor. All right, I know that's been a long spiel of aerodynamics, uh, but now let's get on to what we're actually going to do with this vehicle. 
As I just said, guys, that has been quite a long video on aerodynamics. I hope the information was useful to you. So there will be a part two to this coming out in the next few days. I'd like to say thank you for watching. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Throw me some comments down there. And uh, on the next video, I'll be showing you what I actually put on my car. And until next time, thanks for watching.